Hi, this is Wesley Williams, and in this video, I'd like to give you a quick walkthrough of BuzzBurner and how it uh, works and operates. So, when you first come to the BuzzBurner screen, what it'll ask you to do is to enter in your plugin Dynamo email address to validate that you're an authorized user. Once you've done that, you'll be able to go to the settings page, and then from the settings page, you can make sure that uh, the time zone and so forth is set to, to work with when you want it to run on your current site. You can go through here and, and uh, do some overall global settings for bu buzz burner, such as the if there's images that come in, what are the maximum uh, sizes that you want them to be resize, resized uh, to, uh, the maximum number of items that you want it to, to suck in at any point in time, the maximum number, if somebody posts a full blog post in their RSS feed, what's the maximum number of characters that you want it to, uh, to take from that snippet, the total number of tags per post because it will auto create tags for you. The uh, minimum character count, so uh, when it does create a tag, what's the, the minimum number that the tag has to have in it, as well as an email address to send you a report. So once you've done that, you actually can go on to the campaigns tab and from the campaigns tab and this is actually a real site this is on dot com report and you can see we have quite a few campaigns that are that are running and the way we have this uh, run for us is this video campaign right here you can see we have 62 feeds that are entered into it uh, this runs every two weeks and so it pulls everything that's been posted in those feeds in the uh, previous two weeks and so this runs you can see we have all these different campaigns and actually the one that's set to run for today is January 23rd so this one will run at about 420 our time so you can go through here and you can see there's different feeds different counts they're all around 60 because most of these feeds are uh, applied in, the, in, in multiple campaigns but we're using keywords to negative match and to pull in not only negative match but to pull in specific items from the feed so I'll show you a little bit about that in another video this is like I said just a real quick walkthrough you can go through here and, and add a campaign and from an add a campaign you enter in the name you select the category you wanted to post to the hour of the day the how many hours between post or is there a certain day you wanted to post on every Monday at 9 in the morning whatever um, so is there who do you want the author of the the post to be uh, whether it be admin or if there's a certain person what do you this is actually a, a new feature do you want it to post to a post or a page or what type of um, uh, post type would you like it to create and then what about the post title you can see here it can we give you some data here that you can enter in here this right here if you use this random it will randomly grab a title from one of the snippets that it included and it will put that at the beginning and then you can obviously enter in additional details here that you would like to put after it you can either put a date or is there like a volume number or something like that that you would like to use after it we found using a date um, really adds value to it as well people find that a little bit more timely and also it seems to do a little bit better in the search engines do you, do you have an image that you've uploaded that you would like to be included at the top of every uh, post that it creates now you can have it set it to uh, publish so it, this just is a completely hands-off process uh, have it publish it for you and everything or you can have it go to draft I for this site I have it go to draft and then what it'll do is it will send me an email and tell me that it has a post created and is waiting for me and then I go in and quickly just kind of type a little introductory paragraph I'll show you that in another uh, another post or excuse me another video uh, the total number of feeds uh, in the items of the post you can enter it here this is where I say yes send me an email and then what you can have at the end of each snippet you can actually say you can put in text that you want it to uh, to say continue reading on the domain is what we use here do you want them to be follow no follow links this for you SEO guys this is something more for you what about the excerpt the actual um, what do you post in your RSS feed you can use the default WordPress styling or use a pre uh, formatted one that that we've created and then a little bit about the tags there's a couple of options there on tags do you want it to include the images that you've sucked in from the RSS feeds yes or no and then if so how would you like to for them to be aligned and do you have certain uh, keywords this is really good so if you have images that are being included you could always input in various keywords here that will it, it will rename the images when they save them to your site with the keywords that you have and then a, a number so it, the it's a great way to 
to boost the overall keyword count. Uh, without, don't get crazy here. The idea is you enter in just a few uh, specific keywords around the topic of your niche. And then are there any certain keywords that you would you want to make sure that if it pulls a feed, this is how we pull uh, stories from general news sites and we discard every other story until there's a match and I'll show you that in another video for a soccer site that we use uh, are there certain domains that you want to exclude such as maybe you are pulling from Google News for a particular niche keyword but you could enter in all the domains that you're pulling from directly and it, therefore it would not keep those stories but it would it would only keep the stories that you were not initially uh, targeting directly. And then here you can, and I'll show you this in another uh, video as well, and then here you can enter in five different introductory paragraphs, and then here's five different closing paragraphs. This is a great way to make a general comment include some keyword links to uh, various sites that you may be promoting or you could include affiliate links in here um, but this is a great way to in essence build a relationship with your reader and so um, I have some sites that I have these pre-formatted and then I'll I'll actually sometimes go back in and edit them and so forth but it's, it's a another powerful feature and then you just save the campaign oh yes and then do you want to link directly to the source this is the most white hat way to do it uh, you want do you want to link directly to the source but put all the so the individual snippets that are in the post that it creates it will link each one of those snippets directly or this option right here would be it would not link each snippet directly it would put one uh, it would it would compile all of the links at the bottom of your post and then from there where they would link out to the to the source that's a little bit more gray hat I mean I, I guess that's kind of up to the to the user and then this down here is probably the most black hat way to do it uh, I do not recommend doing this I don't I don't do this in essence you would suck in all the content and you would not link out to the source of the content at all um, the name of it of where you got it from will still be with the content source itself but you're not actually linking back to them I would not do that but I I do this one almost all the time I think it adds the most value for the for the user so um, so what you once you've actually created your campaign then what you can do is you can go over to the feed section and I'll show you how that works here so these are all the feeds that I have added here on dot-com report there's a bunch of them okay and so you can see that here's this red one meaning this site right here aired out so it didn't actually pull from this one and you'll see there's a these are paused and so forth but uh, so you can go through here and enter in feeds. So this is a good example of information week. We pull from there into the video campaign and the fact is is that we have negative mat or we have a, a keyword match that it has to meet certain criteria before it keeps the feed. This allows us we could put information week in multiple campaigns right multiple campaigns and it would all, it would put some information to the video campaign and some information to maybe a PPC campaign so these are a lot of the feeds that we pull in from lots of different sources and you can see there's the domain here's the feed itself and so it's how it works now you can see we went to campaigns you can add a campaign you can see all the feeds here or you can add a feed and I'll show you how easy that is to do. You just enter in the name of the feed provider, such as the domain name itself. You would enter in the domain name, like .com report. You would enter in the feed URL. Now this is a pretty cool feature, and I'll show you this in another video as well, but you can, every link out to the feed source, so if, the, if you were pulling from the .com report, uh, all of our content, you could then actually enter in a, uh, the affiliate link right and so what it allows you to do is still still link over to their source it's kind of a gray hat scenario um, I guess it depends on the actual affiliate program and the terms and conditions but what it would allow you to do is to link back over to their blog post and actually redirect the users on the way to the blog post through your affiliate link so you could drop a cookie as you send them to their site so like I said it's kind of gray hat you gotta make sure that you're in uh, that you comply with the terms and conditions of the affiliate program the feed count right here this is the number of items to keep from the feed what campaign you want to post this feed particular feed to so you would have already created a campaign and then now you're adding feeds to the campaign priority so you can give a campaign you can give a feed priority meaning that fee the items that it pulls from this feed will always be kept in the final post 
because what will happen is as a, as a campaign runs, it pulls in content from all these different sources that you added. They all get put in a bucket. It's mixed and sorted randomly. And then if you said only keep 10 items, for this campaign, then if you had pulled from your 50, 60 different sources, if you had pulled a total of 100 different snippets, but you said only keep 10, it's going to randomly pull 10. So that's kind of uh, what goes into the uniqueness of the content that you're generating. Well, if you want one of those sources to, to always be included, uh, like we have one for WordPress where we, if the creator of WordPress does a post, we want his to always be included, so we gave him priority. So. You can kind of see a little bit how that's done. You can include, exclude keywords from this uh, from this feed. Uh, like I share with you, we have a soccer site, uh, uh, and so we pull sources from local news sports stations. Well, we don't want every news story that's posted. We only want the one they post every uh, you know month or so about soccer. So uh, everything else is discarded unless it has the word soccer in it. Same thing with domains we talked about before, and you can save it. So it's a very easy process. We also give you the ability to upload a CSV file. So if you have a list, like I showed you a minute ago, we have 50, 60 different uh, feeds in some of those campaigns. So you could actually just enter them all in an Excel file in the format that we tell you right here. And then what would happen is, is instead of having to manually enter them in site after site after site, if you're all centered around a particular niche, you could just browse, upload the folder, set it to a campaign, and you're done. Because the fact is, you may have a scenario where you have 50 or 60 different feeds, and if you can you can go out and and use these same feeds on multiple sites, and because of the random randomness. Uh, part of the the sorting and uh, collecting the feeds that what actually ends up being uh, posted at the end will be different from site to site to site that's how we have uh, this running on um, on sites all around a particular niche and then they all run we have them you know one running every 30 hours another one running every 20 hours another one running on Tuesdays just different things and then the the net effect of that is that they all end up creating this very random uh, set of posts that provide value really provide a lot of great content for anyone that happens to to stumble on it um, and so it it's provides value then at the same time our introductory and closing paragraphs promote our main product and service so uh, it's a great way you can accumulate all your feeds in one CSV file, upload it, it'll save you a ton of time. And then of course we give you a log, so you can kind of make sure if you ever wonder what's happening with BuzzBurner, you can click on the log, go right in there and see, yes, it's running, it's checking for see if it needs to run a campaign. So I wanted to give you a quick overview of BuzzBurner, how it works, how it operates. Uh, I'll go a little bit more in detail in another video, but this one's kind of pushing uh, 13 minutes here, so I apologize, and I hope to see you inside BuzzBurner. Thanks. Bye.